Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the April Garden Tour. I figured it was about time I got around to coming out here on a nice overcast day and filming what I've been getting up to in the garden. I'll show you all my gardens today, the main flower walk, my grandma's garden, the hydrangea garden, the raised beds, and also I'll show you the driveway garden, which has undergone some pretty serious changes since the last time we've seen it. So let's just take a look around together. So here we are at the entrance to the garden. I have that hedge of Bergarten sage that I've had for probably about three or four years now. I started with just a few plants and I propagated it from softwood cuttings. I have some dwarf Alberta spruce flanking the entrance here. And just come on in. Y'all know you're welcome in my garden anytime. In case this is your first time joining us, my name's Danielle and I garden here in zone 6B, South Central Pennsylvania on half an acre. These gardens are six years old. We've owned this property for six years and none of the plants that you're gonna see today, aside from the very mature trees, none of that was here. So I put everything in. So nothing is older than six years old. So we can just start over here. The hedge of Bergarten Sage continues. And I was initially calling these daffodils silver smiles, but now I'm thinking I mixed a few things up and maybe they're Pueblo. So let me know what you think. These are starting to turn and they're on their way out. So I'm about to come in here with some shallow rooted annuals and just plant around them as they die back. I have a dogwood there that's a yellow twig dogwood. I was really thankful to have that around Christmas time. It was really great. Here I have a little hedge of catmint, which once again, I just always divide it and move it around and propagate it. A really great perennial, smells great. My cats love it. And I love the more silvery green foliage on there. I put in a lot of new peonies this year that you'll see. They're just starting to pop out of the ground. That's why they don't have mulch on them yet. I get a lot of questions about peonies that aren't blooming. That's usually due to planting depth. They've been planted too deeply or they're not in enough sun, but usually it's planting depth. They should really only be covered with about one inch of soil. I believe this is called a gold mound spirea, and I just love that chartreuse color in the garden. The limelight hydrangea is looking great. And then we can turn here slowly. I just put in this flagstone path about a few, maybe like two or three weeks ago. And I'm really enjoying the added charm that I feel that brings to the garden. I guess I'll just focus here on the right side guys and then I'll come back down to the left. So right here I have Black Knight Scabiosa from seed. Most of my garden is from seed, so you'll see it's very young right now. Um, back there I have some Joe Pie weed and some divisions of Joe Pie weed. This that looks like kind of a Japanese maple is Lemony Lace Elderberry. And once again, I love that chartreuse color in the garden. I'm not sure I've ever told you guys this before, but I have really bad eyesight. So for me, adding that um, like nice foliage color and differing foliage color really helps me to see the garden better. Now all these tulips are the Jubilee collection from Longfield Garden. And I'm really enjoying the colors here. I think I planted these in a video when I talked about how to plant tulips as cut flowers or how to plant tulips in a trench. Lots of beautiful varieties in here. Some parrots, just some beautiful things. I'm really enjoying this bird bath over here. I think I finally found a placement that the birds like and where I can see the birds well. 
and this bird bath just gets visited so many times a day by the birds and it really brings me a lot of peace and joy but mainly peace there's something really peaceful about watching birds take a bath now we've just got more black knight scabiosa we've got some yellow perennial yarrow in there i've got my prairie fire crab apple and then you'll see some older peonies those peonies back there are festiva maxima i guess they are six years old now this is a vitex here that just hasn't leafed out yet I really like to have logs all around my garden. It's really good for the bugs and the native pollinators. And it's something my grandma always had around her garden. And so I really like to repeat that. This area looks a little bit blank, but it's actually full of lilies. So we just have to wait a bit on that. And then some more peonies I just put in. And if you can see back behind there, I'll overlay a close up is the love call daffodil which is really looking great. I have a sweet pea trellis there. So moving right along, we have some Christophii alliums, which haven't put up their bloom stalks yet. Some alliums in the driveway garden have their bloom stalks up. These tulips are pretty much done. Now we have another limelight hydrangea. Back here, I hope you can see it, is a ginger wine nine bark. And I just love the nine bark so much. I feel like that's really an underrated and undermentioned shrub. So many different foliage colors you can get, makes a great cut flower, and also blooms. For me, it's blooming at some point in May. I guess probably, it seems like when the peonies are blooming, that's when my nine barks bloom. There's some more peonies. That one's probably about three years old now. Now here it looks a little bare, but what I've got going on here is 45 Costa Gladiolas and I have Colorado Yarrow. And then I just took more divisions of my catmint and swooped it around here. Now my really big hosta from Fibs is not really leafed out yet, but in no time at all, that's gonna fill up that entire space. So I have to kind of hold back planting things cause I know in a few weeks time, she'll take up that whole area. This here is the Annabelle hydrangea. Some ladies mantle, which I need to take divisions of that and move it around. I got this shrub really late last year. So I haven't seen it bloom yet. It's called My Monet Wygella. And I really love the Wygellas. Um, my neighbor and I, we kind of share a Wygella. It's kind of half on each property. You might have seen it in a video before, a big one, but I love the Wygellas. A really nice weeping habit. Beautiful pink colors usually. I think maybe some have white, but at least off the top of my head, most of them have pink. Some more tulips here that just weren't harvested, so they're kind of blown out at this point and now where we are is at my grandma's garden and I think I need to still work on the pathway a little bit this is kind of where I ran out of mulch um, but I think it's looking good and this is really an area that I want to be nice and peaceful so I'm keeping it more about foliage more whites some purples and that's it. And what I need to add to this garden is some old shoes filled with chicks and hens because my grandma always had those around her garden everywhere, just these old shoes with chicks and hens. And uh, so yeah, I need to find some old shoes. <laughs> so here we have Solomon Seal, which is a really great cat flower. Great foliage, you know, the flower is kind of insignificant, holds really, really long in the vase, almost like a leather leaf holds that well. And here I have my Mapira lilies. I'll give you just a little sweeping view here of my grandma's garden. And that's the chair where she can come sit if she likes. I always plant Dusty Miller in this garden because her last name was Miller. What else do I have here? I have some, uh, this is a Father Gilla. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm always nervous to say some of these shrub names. 
Um, feel free to correct me. I don't have any problem with that. And just a little bit of purple columbine. Prairie there in the background, if you can see it. A little more columbine. And just another stump. I don't know, I just really love the look of these stumps in the garden. One thing about being pollinator certified like we are is that you do have to have like um, open dirt and wood like this around. So you can just have a wood pile and we have that also. But I like sticking it in the garden too, almost as, you know, a decorative piece. Now what I'm also doing is sticking around all over the place this mahogany splendor hibiscus, which I grew from seed. I have about 12 of these and these grow pretty big from what I remember last year. I think they grew at least like five by five feet. Now, of course, you can cut on them and keep them smaller. So most people do grow them as a foliage cut. All right, so why don't we now go back down the right side of the border. We'll swing to the hydrangea garden and then back here to the raised beds. So now here on this border, we start off with another nine bark. I think that one is either summer wine or tiny wine. And we have my favorite tree of all time, the service berry right here at the entrance. Beautiful structure, beautiful kind of silvery bark. It has white blooms early on, and then it gets berries. And in the fall, it has beautiful kind of orangey foliage. And it's a native tree. I was listening to a podcast with um, Dr. Robin Wall Kimmer and she was talking about the service berry in reference to getting back to a gift economy rather than a consumer-based economy. It was really a wonderful essay that she had written. It was kind of a spoken word essay that I was listening to. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to check it out. Underneath my service berry, I have some feverfew. That's fall sown feverfew. Here I have some tulips that I got on clearance from Lowe's. So I apologize, I am not sure on the variety. I always wonder why Lowe's doesn't mark their bags a little better. You know, it just says like pink peony tulip. Well, of course that's not the variety. If you know the variety, please um, let me know. Here I have a whole lot of seed seedlings. So I have Madame Butterfly Bronze with White, uh, kind of just all around in there. Here I have a hedge of lavender. This is a Winecraft Gold Smoke Bush. This I think is my favorite chartreuse foliage shrub for full sun because I do like the lemony lace alderberry, but they seem to not be able to handle our sun later in the season. In fact, I may even move these two to somewhere else this year, but this Winecraft Gold Smoke Bush can take full hot blazing sun all day long. Some more peonies back there. And I've got a whole bunch of lilies planted in here. I just planted some salmon star in here. Um, Corvara, I believe is back there. And more mahogany splendor hibiscus. Hopefully you can see, got some bleeding heart in the back. Oh, I think we missed some bleeding heart earlier on too. Guys, I'm so sorry. I feel like I always miss a whole bunch of stuff some sedum that I divided and put over here. These foxy fox trot tulips are just absolutely glorious. They look like sherbet, don't they? Just absolutely stunning. I'm not sure the camera's doing them justice. But then back behind there, that's what I think is actually the silver smiles daffodil. So I'm going to need to keep better notes henceforth. Some more peonies, a crepe myrtle that hasn't leafed out yet. Um, there's the female winterberry here and back directly behind me is the male. Some lamb's ear, this lamb's ear comes right from my grandma's garden. And a St. Francis for her as well, cause she was Catholic. Have a lot of Siberian iris here from my mom's old garden. It hasn't really bloomed yet. Now, a lot of people ask me about this evergreen tree. I did put this tree in 
I'm thinking I put it in four years ago and it is a Japanese cedar. You probably want to do a little bit of Googling on your zone and how the Japanese cedar reacts because I know they can get really tall in some areas, but in ours, they just don't seem to. In fact, we're really on the line for having these. There's a chance someday I could lose it. This is where I stuck a lot of the um, pre, uh, excuse me, the pre-sprouted ranunculus that didn't fit in my raised beds. So these ranunculus have had absolutely no protection, no love at all, and I thought it would just be kind of interesting to do a comparison. So we've hit, you know, 24 many nights, and these guys have all gone uncovered. This is one of my favorite hydrangeas, not in bloom yet, but it's Invincible Spirit too, and I'm going to be putting in a hedge of these in the driveway garden, and I'll tell you all about that soon. Here's a little dwarf lilac. This is the Bloomerang Dwarf Purple Lilac from Proven Winners. I have a few of these. I'm gonna keep this one and I think give the other purple one to my mom after it's done putting on its first set of blooms. I stuck in a lot of what I call extras into this garden. So some delphinium and things like that. And I did have a nice daffodil in here, which has now gone over. And so I need to come in again with a shallow rooted perennial. More hydrangeas. Uh, this is really what I call my hydrangea garden. And as you can see, we can definitely make it bigger and add more hydrangeas. <laughs> over here, I have star flower. This is my first year growing star flower. It's a variety of scabiosa that you grow for the seed pods and you dry them and I'm just so excited. You know, even right now, it's April and I'm already excited for the dried flower Christmas tree. I don't know why, I just love, I love thinking about that and planning for later on in the year. Here I have some straw flower. Like I say, guys, everything I do is pretty much from seeds. So basically my whole garden is seedlings. And all in here is a bunch of lilies that aren't up yet. So yeah, that's the way the hydrangea garden looks so far. It's funny, by the time we do another tour in May, everything is just going to look so different. So now we can head over to the raised beds where I have a lot of cut flowers. I hope you can see here in the camera that's our white lilac that's in bloom. Someone was asking to see how big it was. So we can just start over here, I guess. This is our ranunculus bed and it's looking great. Back behind it, I have Procuts. That's a single stem pollenless sunflower. In this bed, you can see I have failed to get chicken wire yet, so I put my rake and my garden hoe over this area to hopefully deter the squirrels until I get to the hardware store. This is all red and espresso gladiolas. And then back there, I have fall sown love in a mist. Here, I'm pretty sure we planted this bed together. This is the apple blossom snaps that I chose not to pinch. And they were really the only thing that I was concerned about when we got down to 24. I felt like I shouldn't have covered them. I felt like I did more harm than good, but they seem to have taken my mistake with stride and they'll be blooming soon. And then back there is grandma's pin cushion, Scabiosa, or Scabiosa, the variety being grandma's pin cushion. Now I haven't hoed in this area because check this out. I don't even remember when I had Bells of Ireland in here last, but I am seeing Bells of Ireland in this area popping up all over the place. So I am going to prick it out and put it somewhere. Cause if you guys grow Bells of Ireland, you know, sometimes it's really hard to germinate. And like, look at this. So I need to save these guys. So I'll be moving them somewhere else soon. Now in this bed, I have some strawberries. This bed actually used to be almost all strawberries and I've kind of eliminated them in lieu of cut flowers. Then I have the delphinium 
And back behind that, I have Dara. And this bed, I have Orlea over here and Dianthus here. And I think I showed you this bulb lasagna just the other day. It's still looking great. Now we're expecting some pretty heavy rain. So I have a feeling I'll be saying goodbye to a lot of my tulips soon. But yeah, right above us is the lilac. And then let me show you something kind of weird I'm doing this year. Now over here is an area that looks a little bit silly and I'm trying something new this year. I'm calling this area the Island of Misfit Flowers, meaning that anytime I have a spare seedling or some leftover seeds that I don't need, I'm either plunking them over here or throwing the seed in. And we're just gonna see who survives and thrives. I'm not even watering anybody in. I'm really being almost to the point of uh, neglectful, I guess you could say. But like, here's some status. Here's some snapdragons that I brought over from last year. I even put some sweet peas in here to see how they handle complete neglect. Colorado yarrow and the star flower seem to be winning as far as neglect goes at this point. But you know, right, here's even a Bells of Ireland. So this might look completely ridiculous and be a ridiculous idea, but I thought it would be a fun experiment because I always have seedlings left over and they usually just go over there in the compost pile. So why not? So let me give you this beautiful view over here. These are our black raspberries, but I want to show you this view. I mean, isn't that something else? I gotta get a bench back here or something so I can look at that. All right, guys, well, we're over in the driveway garden now. We have our Cortland apple tree right here that has pink lady grafted onto it. I've edged the first part of this bed with liriope. I just got a section from my neighbor a few years ago and kept dividing it. I'm pretty sure these hookera here are guacamole hookera. It's been a while since I got them, but to my eye, at my best guess, that's what that is. Now, this whole garden is entirely a cutting garden, essentially. So many parts of it are going to look very, very young at this point. And as always, I apologize for the road noise. We have a Chicago fig right here. I've grown the Chicago fig at work and it does really good in our area. Back there, I have a whole bunch of alliums that are gonna be blooming soon. I don't know if you just saw that, but we do have a family of birds living there. And right behind me, we have some baby birds um, on the porch. I'll show you those. Down here I have more Colorado yarrow. These are drumstick alliums that haven't bloomed yet. I have all my stargazer lilies and Casablanca lilies in this area. Some iris that I brought over from our old house. Starflower, did I already say that? <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> and then I wanna give a shout out to um, Jay's Garden Journal for giving me the idea for the pathway to the swing. She does a lot of things with like no-till where she puts cardboard down and mulch or plants into it. And I have been wanting something that looked really nice and natural for this pathway. And so I just followed her lead and put cardboard down and then mulch over it. And then I just put more logs because you know, that's great for all of our native bees. Sound purple hookera here, I apologize. Can't remember the variety, it's been too long. More lilies. Black Knight scabiosa in here. Uh, quick fire hydrangea there, and then a whole bunch of foxy foxglove is what's back there. Same thing, I repeated the foxy foxglove over here. We did that sweet pea trellis together. And now we had to have a bit of vision, I feel like, as we're over here. Because say for instance, that um, hydrangea right there is going to get eight feet by eight feet. So we have to really imagine that kind of filled in. But for now, I'll just try to fill in with some cutting annuals. And guys, don't mind the weeds over here. I don't spend quite as much time over here as I should. 
this shrub is super awesome. And did you ever get a shrub and you think, oh, it's just okay. And then the next year you think, okay, this shrub is awesome. This is Lowscape Mounderonia. It's blooming now, but before it actually opened its blooms and it just had the bloom heads, I was using it in arrangements to test the vase life and it lasted two weeks and I just got sick of it and threw it away. So that's a really, really great shrub and it does get berries later on. So we've got some stock in here. I've got some Christophii alliums. There is a little bit of sedum. Some of my sedum that I planted over here didn't make it. So my guess is that the soil over here was just st staying too moist. Back there, I have a Kodiak black Dervella. Once again, that's gonna get four feet by four feet and fill in that area. But I'm not really happy with how I cut this area like that. I actually just mowed and that's too sharp of a curve. So I'm gonna come back in and I think do this kind of a thing and then plant either pro cuts or I have two trays of Little Flower Girl from Florette, and maybe I'll put them back there. Here is the Limelight Prime Hydrangea, which if you can get your hands on one, you will not regret it, I promise you. I don't know how they made the limelight better, but they really did. It's really more of a lime color, and once it gets its fall red color, it really holds true for much longer. A much better dried flower on the Limelight Prime than the Limelight from what I saw last year. Now I've hedged this bed also with catmint because free plants. <laughs> and this area looks bare, but actually what I did is planted a lot of bare root perennials over here. So if you're getting into growing cut flowers for profit, you probably want to invest in bare root perennials rather than buy like a finished perennial at a nursery. So they're just starting to come up. Basically I did all stilby over here. A stilby is a really great shade cut flower. So you can see they're just kind of starting to pop up and I haven't really mulched it much over here yet, but this will all be full of a still be. Um, I got a purple and a pink one that both get about four feet tall. Here I have a whole bunch of pro cuts and then growing up both this birdhouse and my other birdhouse, I'm doing cup and saucer vine from seed. That tree back there is a lavender twist weeping red bud. All right guys, so it's actually about three hours later now because we had a bit of rain come through. It's just drizzling now, so I think I'll try to show you the rest of things. This here is a Brandywine Viburnum. I got that on clearance in the fall and I just can't wait to see it bloom. It gets beautiful berries and they're just starting to come on now. So as far as the hedge of Invincible Spirit 2 hydrangeas, my plan, and I'm totally open and hopeful for suggestions on this, I ordered five and I'm hoping to put them behind the swing. So it appears kind of that the Invincible Spirit 2 hydrangeas are kind of hugging the swing. Um, the Invincible Spirit 2 is one where Proven Winners donates $1 per shrub purchase to the uh, Breast Cancer Foundation. And I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but cancer is pretty prevalent in my family. I won't get into any personal details. I'm sure, you know, no one needs to know that. But let's just say that I think that will be really nice and important to me to have that hedge there. So let me know if you think the hedge should go there or if maybe there's a better placement for the five invincible spirits. But that was my initial thought. So it'll be really nice to kind of see this garden evolve. I think too, once I fix that and make it, you know, not dip in, instead go out rather, I think that'll look a lot better too. So now we can head to the front of the property. You can see I have a lot of my seedlings hardening off right now. Here's where we have some baby birds. These bird houses were here when we purchased the property but we always have babies in this red one. So isn't that amazing? And we seem to have at least two rounds of baby birds each year. Now this is the front garden. And if you watch my channel, you know that this is uh, the garden that I struggle with. It's just hard for me to want to work up here because of, you know, a lot of elements. It's very loud and noisy. It's just a straight bed. The soil does not drain properly. It is basically shade. 
And we have all kinds too, I never mentioned this before, all kinds of old piping that run through this area. We even have pipes that run like underneath the ground and then out to the road. So I really cannot do too much serious excavating up here. You know, there's not gonna be any changing of the curves or anything like that. Um, that would just be too costly for, for what me and my husband can afford. But anyway, let me show you what's going on here right now. So we have the bearded iris that I brought over from our old house. Down here I have lemon jade sedum. I love that sedum. That's much better than the autumn joy that everyone has. I put in more mahogany splendor hibiscus just to fill in the gaps. A limelight. We have some of uh, woodland phlox. I'm pretty sure that's on the native list, but please correct me if I'm wrong, somebody out there. I've got some hostas sprinkled in here. This hydrangea, is it called Incredible, I think? It's the improved version of Annabelle that's not supposed to flop over. And then some rhododendron and just some other perennials. So my thought really what to do moving forward here in the front is to move all of these perennials and to replace them all with something like Strongbox Holly and just create a nice evergreen hedge. I've also ordered two fluffy arborvitaes, which I want to stick up here. I've ordered some more rhododendrons, and I really just want to fill it up with really easy care evergreen shrubs. I just feel like I just honestly need a place that's not so labor intensive. You can probably tell that, you know, growing everything from seed, having this pretty large cutting garden or small flower farm. It's very labor intensive. I'm out here every single day working and I absolutely love that. But I think that in the front, I need a place where I'm just gonna stick a plant and be done with it. Here's also a nice azalea blooming over here. All right, let me show you one more view and then I think we've seen everything. So this is just a view when you pull into our driveway into the main parking spot. We have a summer rambo apple there. We have two tart cherries here. Down way at the end, we have an old pear. This here is something similar to a Macintosh, not sure on the exact variety. And back there we have a Coosa dogwood. And what I'm gonna try to do this year, just a bit, is to just work on the shade garden. It's really always just been grass and weeds all along here. And so I've just started to try to take divisions of some things I already have and place them in here. So eventually I would love to have, you know, a winding, curving kind of woodland garden in here. I don't think that's something that I'll finish up this year, but just as I'm able to divide and move things, I'll work on that garden. Well guys, I wanna thank you so much for coming along with me on this April garden tour. I hope it was enjoyable to watch. I always love to see everyone else's garden. So if you're on Instagram or a place like that, please do tag me so I can see your beautiful gardens and so I can get to know you better. I wanna sincerely thank you for doing things like subscribing to my channel, liking the videos and commenting. I really can't tell you how much that helps me out. You know, I think I might have said it either in the community tab or on Instagram, but I really don't have any intent to be a YouTuber. I don't really have the necessary equipment, to be honest with you, the videography experience or editing or anything like that. I am just a small scale flower farmer out here trying to share the joy of gardening and the therapy that gardening can bring. So I really appreciate your support. And I probably should let you know, I am trying to save up for a camera that is a little more, shall we say, vlogging friendly, I suppose. But for now, I'll just be thankful for the GoPro and my big old picture camera and we'll make it work. Well, guys, I want to wish you an absolutely wonderful day out there in your gardens. And until next time, happy gardening. Bye.